Hey everyone, hope you're all doing it very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking yet another look at a CNHL Lithium Polymer Boundary Pack and ultimately putting this one to the test. In the past, what we did is we looked at the G Plus line and we tested out the 70C battery that was at 5,000 milliamp hour. Today, we got something different here. We got this uniquely wrapped 5200 CNHL battery pack that boasts a 90C rating. So we're gonna get this here up on the testing equipment. We're gonna first look at the internal resistance of the cells that are in this battery pack, as well as the second battery pack. Now we're gonna go about this the same way that we do in all of our battery test videos. We're gonna first take a look at the internal resistance, and then we're gonna compute the C rating based off of IR, and then we're gonna ultimately do our load test, which is gonna load this well beyond the 100 amp mark, and see what kind of performance that we get out of this battery pack compared with the G plus line that we tested a while ago. Let's jump into that internal resistance test and go from there. All right, this is the part where we tank the charger. We're gonna set it here at a rate of 7.8 amps. And the reason why we choose 7.8 amps is because we want to have a 1.5C charge rate for every single one of the batteries that we test here on the channel. So I'm gonna speed through this and you can see the seconds go by very quickly once we get up to that one minute mark here. This is where our internal resistance is red and we see it at 5.9 there. It's a little small in the screen that I see and we got 1.4 million 1.4, 1.6, 1.3. So now we're gonna switch this over to channel two. I'm gonna up that, bump it to 7.8 amps, just like we did with battery pack number one. And I'm gonna fire up the test here. And we're gonna skip through this first section, just like we did there for the first battery pack. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the results of pack two and pack one. We're gonna average all the internal resistances there. And I'm gonna bring it over to the RC calc sheet where we can actually determine what the actual internal resistance and C rating is. So we got internal resistances of 1.7 throughout and then the last cell there is 1.5. So we're gonna take the average of all this and then we're gonna compute our C rating. Here we're taking a look at the RC Explained Calc Sheet. If you're a member of any tier within the Patreon site, you will gain access to this sheet and you can have a copy for yourself so that you can take a look at anything that's inside of this calculator. We're gonna use the RC Lipo Calcs tab at the very bottom. You can see there's multiple different tabs here to access and gain access to those calculators. This is the one we're gonna be using here for today. So let's take a look at it right here. I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller here so we can see these windows or actually I'm gonna drag myself down here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at the actual C rating that we get based off of IR. First thing we gotta do is put in the capacity of our pack. This is 5200. Now you can see that the internal resistance here of the CNHL that we tested right now is 1.54 on average. If I click that, you can see those are all the cells that we had within that pack. And then the Spectrum Smart G2 5000, that actually came out at 4.55, so significantly higher internal resistance. And then the CNHL 5000G plus 70C, that several, several, many months ago came in at 1.4 as an average internal resistance. So there you can see the differences already. And if we put in the 5200 and then we put the internal resistance of 1.54, this gives us a battery packs calculated real C rating of 27.9 giving us a potential maximum continuous current of 145 amps. And that's a pretty good internal resistance and a C rating that we have here from the CNHL, more budget friendly type pack. I would actually put it in the medium tier there purely because of its performance that you're getting out of the pack. Now that we have an idea as to how this compared against the G plus lineup, now let's jump right into our test where we take a look at the performance that we got out of this battery. Here is our data and our graph for our load test. Now we did bring these batteries up to 105 amps on average, and this is how they perform. Now, first I wanna talk about this being potentially the very first time where we're comparing two battery packs of the same manufacturer that essentially fall in the same class. One battery being at 5200, 
90C and the other one being a 5070C rated battery. And the 70C rated is the G plus and the 90C is the one that we are testing here today. Let's start things off and look at the total milliamp hour that we're getting out of each one of these packs. So the battery that we tested today, we're at 4682 versus 4518. The new battery pack actually dissipated more power output today than we saw from the other battery. Now things change when we look at the milliamp power to 3.5 and 3.6 as well as the times our new battery pack that we tested here today is delivering 1401 where the G plus line ended up hitting 1780 and the time to 3.5 was 48 seconds for the battery we tested today and for the previous one 60 seconds and then the milliamp hour to 3.6 was 579 versus 765 and the corresponding times there was 19 and a half and 25 and a half so the old battery the G plus lineup ended up doing better here in this particular segment of the test. Now looking at the voltage here at the 10 second mark, we got 3.65 versus a 3.67. The G plus lineup ended up doing a little bit better here. And then we look at the overall energy per cell measured in watt minutes. We're getting 978 for the battery, the 90 C battery and 955 for the G plus battery. The average cell wattage was three 350 versus about 361 watts per cell. So this overall shows us that the G plus lineup actually performs better. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about what we're going to do here just to verify this. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. What I do plan is I wanna see what kind of performance we actually get out of this pack. If I cut this EC5 off and I replace it with the AS150s that I quite commonly have used to test equipment here, test the lithium polymer battery packs. Now I was keeping those EC5 connectors because a commenter said, well, if the battery doesn't come with it, why are you replacing the connector? But the reality of our hobby is we're probably gonna to have to replace many of the connectors on our battery battery packs because we don't always have the right connector. And I'd highly recommend never to use adapters to convert from one to another. I'd always recommend cutting off your connector, desoldering your connector, and replacing it with the one that you actually require. This will give you the least amount of connections, making your setup the best in terms of performance that it can be. Well guys, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed all the videos that we do here testing lithium polymer battery packs so you can get the best value for your dollar when you're buying RC LiPos. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.